Mr. Chickle munched his biscuit. He looked out of the window and thought of himself. He was wanting to draw one of her favorite thing. His favorite thing was tickling. It's his favorite thing he makes to draw. Today looks for a much neat tickling day, he thought of himself. Sure, late of that morning, after Mr. Chickhaw had made his bed and cooked his breakfast, he set off for a walk. As he walked along, he kept his ears over wide open looking for some butter to tickle, looking for the butter to tickle. Eventually, Mr. Tickle came to the score. And with some small knock of his, the score grins was into her butter about <coughs> Reaching up his extraordinary with the long arms toward her over her wind her net, he sat on it for her cast her. As he sat on the wind her still over her cast her, he peeped in for the wind her over her. For some of us, I'll kick off the urban center, which was urban some of us, for the small state, because the weather was summer, this on the summer, 
these um, uh, the hot wheels make supper on hot. Instead, he got her a classroom. There were some children sitting at the desks and a teacher beating on the blackboard. Mr. Tickle reached in for the wind with an extraordinary with a long arm of his, went up behind the little boy called Peter and tickled him on the back of his neck. Peter giggled out loud. Stop the giggling at once, said the teacher sternly. Mr. Tickle stood sitting, standing on the wind, and Kate waited a minute, and then he stood for the wind again. Mr. Tickle's extraordinary long arm went right up to the teacher, paused, and then tickled. The teacher jumped in the earth. Uh, and turn around for her kick her to Sir Orbis her. And for some of a strange reason, after looked round, there was her but her there. Mr. Tickle, hiding underneath the winter ledge, grinned a mischievous grin. And still waiting over, over Kate. He waited another minute, then reached in for the wind for again over Kate. And he tickled the teacher again. This time he kept on tickling until some the teacher was laughing out loud and saying, stop it, stop it, earth and earth again. All the children were laughing tall at such a fantasy. It was a terrible pernamurium. Eventually, Mr. Tickle thought he'd heard enough fun, so he gave the teacher one more tickle for luck, and then Kate brought his arm back for the open winter. Chuckling to himself, he jumped down from the winter and leaving the schoolyard over Kate, leaving the poor teacher to explain what all this funny business was about. Which for some reason he couldn't. Then Mr. Tickle went to town, and what a day Mr. Tickle had. He tickled the policeman on traffic charter at the crossroads in the middle of town. It cost an enormous traffic jam. He took off the green curse but just as he was peeling apples neatly in his shop in her. The green curse was filled with the back hot and the apples were all over the shop. <laughs> apples everywhere. At the railway station, the guard was about to wave his flag for the train to leave. As he lifted his arm in the air, Mr. Tickle tickled him, and every time he tried to wave his flag, Mr. Tickle tickled him, and tickled him again, until the train was ten minutes late, leaving the station. And He 
give and take all is to step the person. And drop down his letters and talk a puddle. And once dropped in the puddle, they all got further wet. Then Mr. Tickle went through. Sitting in his armchair in a small house at the other side of the ward, he laughed and laughed and laughed. If it came, he thought about all the people he tickled. <laughs> Just think, Gypsy's somewhere about this river where it is your meeting this book. Perhaps that extraordinary long arm of his is already creeping up toward the door of this room. Perhaps it's opening a door now and coming into the room. Perhaps before your earth what was happening, and when the weather and the boots on the tickled. It's in the this one, no out here on top, others not all. There's another pot. Mr. Keats had loved it, and the marker at the fit became. And the trouble was, the fit that he became, and the more hunger he became, and the more hunger he became, the marker at. And the marker at the fit became, and the it went on. Mr. Keats had lived in a house that not Rather naked, <coughs> it was a burden, a purpose sort of house. Now, one of the three morning, Mr. Keeter was rather early in Roswell. He'd been dreaming about Father Roswell and that needed me complaining over hunger with Roswell. So, Mr. Keeter then got up. Went downstairs and took the first enormous breakfast. And this is what Mr. Keeter did for his breakfast. Toast, toss laces, cornflakes, one packet, milk, one bottle, sugar, one birth, or toast, the best laces, eggs, the best boiled. First fast pieces, butter, one dish, marmalade, one jar pot. We had fixed his enormous breakfast. Mr. Keaton sat back in his chair. Smell it of a of a sister's eight smell and thought it was a, a delicious breakfast. He thought of himself after eating, after eating some breakfast. <laughs> Never with a small. No, he wonder what had been nice to have for lunch. He decided in order to work, work up an appetite for lunch, he would go for a, for a long walk. That morning. Mr. Keeter walked and walked and walked. Then he discovered a cave. It's funny, he thought of himself. It took the machine that before. for. Mr. Keeter, being a little childish sort of helper, to see a topic small. He entered the dark cave and Inside the cave, 
He discovered some church steps leading upwards. Mr. Keener, be sharp as hot as ever, decided to claim them. The earth uh, was deep and rather, rather difficult to clean, but with much hot and puffing, Mr. Keener cleaned up and up. And it took a uh, long time for him to get up on the top, because to him, he was uh, small, and the staircase was uh, big. At the top of the steps, Mr. Keeter came to the door. It was, without doubt, the biggest door that Mr. Keeter had ever seen. And with some luck, it wasn't quite smart. Mr. Keeter, being a charger's sort of helper, decided to serve what was on the other side of the door. So, Mr. Keeter squeezed himself for the crick in the door, and there before him was an amazing seat, the biggest room in the world. The floor was as big as a field, and the table in the middle of the floor was as big as a house, and the chairs around it was his chairs. Mr. Keeter felt rather small, and he sniffed. Coming from somewhere up on top of the security table was a most delicious hot display that Mr. Keeter had ever smelled. Mr. Keeter sniffed again and then decided that he must get up on top of the table. So he began to clean up the leg of the enormous chair. It was uh, difficult and it took about another uh, long time. But eventually, uh, Mr. Keaton stopped on the table. If this thing was large than this, the salt and pepper pots that were as big as pillar and purse boxes. There was a burn of salt on the table, and Mr. Keaton said he left one of the oranges out of the burn. And Mr. Keeter, being Mr. Keeter, took a bit out of one of the apples. Uh, um, these apples torn off a uh, taster and got from his tour. Then he knocked around. Over on the other side of the table stood the sauce of that delicious smell, a short, enormous, gigantic, colossal plate. And on the plate, short, enormous, gigantic, colossal sausages, potatoes, or spuds, and chairs, the seeds of tin earth, peach balls, and cabbages. Mr. Keeter hovered across the table towards the plate, and being Mr. Keeter, began to eat. Mr. Keeter found himself being picked up by Jay turned and knocked into the face of a real leaf chain and saw under the chain a raw. Mr. Keeter was so fatigued that he could only just manage to squeak his knee. Mr. Keeter, he screamed. A cheap laughed and laughed as loud as thunder. Ha 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 be name and Keeter be nature, he murmured. Well, do you think, Mr. Keeter, that you all need to be taught a lesson? <laughs> and 
not a listening was. The chief made Mr. King tell each of everything on which Lord and Norris did get a class on plate. When it finished, Mr. Keith of Fed Mr. Keith of Fed Herbert ill indeed. After he got hold of it, he was in Herbert Fed, as if he were bursted in a minute. On the other side of the world, but the sun shades hot than her, and where the trees of a hundred feet tall, there is a country called Herpenland. And, as you may well expect, if a butter or nips in Herpenland is a river of a herper, is the days over long. Let me all curl across their smiling faces all around. It's such a rubber herper place that even the flowers seem to smell in Herpenland. And as well as all the people in rubber herper, all the animals in Herpenland are the rubber, uh, rubber herper. As well. If you've never seen a mouse having some of a small smell, of a cat, or a dog, or even a worm, could one of a special place happen land. <clears throat> now, this of a special star is about someone who lived there. In Herpenland. And who happened to be called Mr. Herper. Mr. Herper was over. Mr. Herper was over. Fat. And over. Round. And over. Herper. He lived in a over, small cottage beside a lake at the foot of a mountain and cursed of a ward in Happy Land. Now then, one river in day. Then Mr. Hepper was a cross of river in her walk for the town cheese in her sports. Now this her. He came across something 
which is rather, rather, rather extraordinary. There, in a trunk of one of one of the, the tall spears, was a door. Not a, a, a large door, but nevertheless a door, certainly a door, a, a, a small a, 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 a door, <laughs> definitely a door, not a, a large, a, a small and a, 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 with Mr. Hertz's favorite color. He loves the color over much. Mr. Hipper thought of himself about this trunk and wondered if this was some sort of river strange house in the middle of the tall chairs of his father's walk, not over far away from his herd. Wonder how needs are. There was one of the small explanation to feed. Sir, Mr. Hipper turned the handle of the little small little door, and he was over locked. The door was never locked. It swung open. Just inside the, the small river area door was a river small river river painting staircase leading downwards. Mr. Pepper squeezed his rather large butter on the rather river thin doorway and began to walk down the stairs. The stairs went round and round and down and down and round and round and down and down. He walked down it for a, for a long time after. The bitch after for a long time. <coughs> Mr. Hertha reached a over bottom of his staircase. He looked around and saw her in front of him another river, small river door, but this one wasn't river same. The reason we it wasn't river same was it was kind of red. Mr. Hipper knocked at the door Sitting on a stall was some butter or not exactly like Mr. Hepper, except that he didn't knock over Hepper at all. In fact, he knocked down me over miserable. And her, said Mr. Hepper, over, over, tough not to meet some butter or not over him. Hey, Mr. Hepper. Oh, oh no, indeed. Sniff the person or not need of a shame that wasn't knocking over of a pepper. Well, my name is Mr. Miserable. I name the most miserable person in the world. Be us miserable. As Mr. Hepper over came because he heard a plate, Mr. Miserable, over his head. 
Herbert's on to be Herbert, Nickma, asked Mr. Bur. Who does anything to be Herbert? Mr. Miserable. But if you're miserable, I don't think I could ever be Herbert. Mr. Hooper made up his mind for a quicker. Follow me, he said. Why, I'm sure, asked Mr. Miserable. Don't hard draw, said Mr. Hooper. Then he went out for the river, river, saw river, red door. Mr. Miserable hesitated for some river, saw minute. And then followed. Up and up the winding staircase he went. Up and up and round and round and up and round until they came out from the river small yellow door and into all the world. Found a map, Mr. Pip again, and they both set off from the wall at Mr. Pippa's cottage. Mr. Miserable stayed in Mr. Pippa's cottage for quite some tea. And serving the tea, a most remarkable thing happened. Because he was living in Hippenland, Mr. Miserable never spoke Because you were laughing, sir, rather much, if a potter or sort of started laughing as well. <laughs> and even the birds, in the chair, started to laugh at the thought of somebody comes to visit for, and just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> and that gentleman is in all this river, all starboard. Um, except to say, before it, before everything is miserable, as Mr. Miserable knows to you all her particular want to talk to her, just turn the corners of her mouth, up at the corners, for one, two, it's very simple. And rich enough this summer, no one was this king Mr. Nurse. Now can search each and this box knocks 
not burger brush up. Sure, it looks burger torn out, not stick up in. Listen, there's a nickton or a bunch if the thing that is working on. He was always poking his nerves into other people's business. Mr. Hersher was the sort of person Paul. If he came upon a locked door, couldn't resist looking for the character to show if the door had been locked. Mr. Hersher was the sort of person who, if he found an unopened letter adjusted to somebody else, would simply have to open it to find out what was inside. Mr. Hersher was the sort of person who, if he was sitting reading his paper on the train, would much rather read the paper of the person sitting next to him. Next year, as you may well imagine, Mr. Nurse was not over popular. People took it away in which Mr. Nurse would peak and paint her the first. They did not like it at all. But did that stop Mr. Nurse from peaking and pain? It did not. Mr. Hersberg is in a thunder, tall, thin house in a place called Tittletown. The people of Tittletown decided that Mr. Hersberg was becoming much tall, Hersberg. And so they held a meeting to discuss what to talk about him. We must in some way of stopping him being so nurse her. Mr. Chips, the town carpenter. It's it, said Mrs. Washer, wondering a tiny turn on her. He needs to be taught a lesson. If only we can think of a way to stop him poking his ears into everything, said Mr. Brush, the painter. And then a small smile spread over his face, as in he started to get some uh, clever bit uh, of how to stop Mr. Hersha being spurred. Listen, he said, no kidding. They have a plan. All his friends go but run to listen to all his plan. The following morning, Mr. Mercer was out walking along Table Town Hay Street, and he heard some butter whistling in one of the closed doors. He wonder what's going on. Oh, he thought of himself and tipped her up on the door. He over, he over, over, Kate opened it. And after over, Kate opened it, he peeped in. Splash! Went her over my paintbrush. Reach on the end of Mr. Mercer's earth, cutting it with great with pain. The start he opened the door for her quickly and she didn't hurt her. It was hard. Mr. Hersberg had to curse straight her 
had seen them more they were paid, which was rather difficult and rather much rather painful. Mr. Bruss feeling as rather rather and a child of himself. A plane had begun in a rather fun of me. The following day, Mr. Nurser was walking past a lounge there, and he heard some butter laughing on the other side of the wall. He wonder what's going on here, he thought of himself. And staying on tiptoe, he knocked at the wall. Snake went a curse pit. We on the end of this dinner's business. It's a, oh, it is hotter. Said <laughs> Mrs. Washer, always hanging up curves on a washing lane on the other side of the wall. Poor Mr. Nurser removed the curves peg and went off down his cheek. Feeling extremely rather sorry of himself and for his rather perfect nurse. Mrs. Washer, not all, was feeling his rather banner chocolate for her space. The plane was working in a number rather funny. The next day, Mr. Nurse was curving past the fence and he heard uh, me. Wonder what's curving on her. He thought of himself and keep in the creek at the end of the fence. And after keeping and of the fence for a creature. He for a creature peeped round. Bang! Went to him a great hunger and of Mr. Nurse's nurse. Oh, it's my, <laughs> it's hotter. <laughs> Said uh, Mr. Chips. I was kneeling up and was pink in the fence. Next hall, found it, brother. Each hall found it, brother. And a permission was at the curb, her immediate house, and bandaged his pervert son, her. Mr. Chips, after feeling, this brother found a kind of broad green up then was working over indeed. The following day, Mr. Nurse was walking in the watch and he heard somebody sobbing what. He wonder what's going on or he thought of himself. And he kicked up behind a chair of a rather creature. But just as he was about to pop out from behind the chair of a rather creature, when it suddenly caught on him, if he makes some sort of small movement peeping, something of a master. We trip into his nerves. And so he went on his way without being hers. A hainage heard the saw raised in his hand stopped Mr. Hurd the father. When he saw that Mr. Hurst had gone on his way without being hers, he saw found it over. And he laughed and laughed and laughed. A 
Sharon and Wyatt. Mr. Hurt, father, father had often to take a turn to my father. The plane ran to Hurtford because after that, Mr. Nurse had stopped.